From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. Thank you for joining us this morning. It's Monday, May 6th. Let's get started. Waiting for the tourists to come and for the season to really get going. And, and as you can see on a Sunday afternoon brunch, uh, it's not happening. Business owners wonder where are the customers, while at the same time, Governor Gavin Newsom says tourism numbers are golden. We look at the disparities. We've expanded to, you know, seniors, people who need assistance for, for residents to feel safe just walking through their neighborhood. Bay Area Bridge Builders creating safe passage for youth in the Tenderloin. This is our culture, low riding culture, Chicano culture. Mexican culture and community pride. How something that was once outlawed is now the center of celebrations in San Jose. And a former Giants icon and one of baseball's greatest players celebrating a big day. Happy birthday 93 to Willie Mays. Willie, and if today is your birthday, we wish you a happy birthday as well. We're happy you're with us. It's now 7 o'clock. I'm Reed Cowan. Yeah, time to get up and out the door. I'm Gianna Franco, and yeah, thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah, starting a new work week with a birthday 93 years That's young. Impressive. What a living legend. Can't yeah. wait to share his story. Want to take a live look outside on this Monday morning as we start a new work week here, and I think it's going to be a beautiful week. All week long, Jessica. I know on Saturday the rain came and went, mm -hmm. but it's gone for a little while. Exactly. We're done with the rain for now, and I know it impacted many events over the weekend. I was supposed to actually fly on Saturday, or I was considering flying on Saturday, but we changed the flight to Sunday. I flew with sea adventures or seaplane adventures all the way up in Mill Valley, and we took that seaplane over the bay, over San Francisco, and it was a beautiful sight to see, to see all those blue skies after that cold front swept through Saturday bringing in heavy rain for many of us here in the Bay Area. And of course, we are all still feeling the impacts today because those temperatures are chilly. I mean, compared to our daytime highs the last week around this time, we're sitting about 10 degrees cooler. Upper 60s are expected today near San Jose, mid 60s into Redwood City, and we have some low 60s across that beautiful Bay Bridge you see above me, anywhere from San Francisco all the way over into Oakland. If you live up in the North Bay or if you commute up there, expect low 60s today too. It's going to be a cool one for us this afternoon, but we have some changes in the forecast heading into the afternoon hours day by day this week. We're actually going to hit the 90s in certain areas once we head into later this week. I'll get to that in just a second. We just have some passing clouds in the forecast for us today. Nothing to write home about. This is a beautiful forecast to get out there and get some fresh air. But today is the day you probably want to have some layers. As we head into the rest of this week, we'll continue to see dry conditions. Not a drop of rain in sight throughout the next seven days. But what we do have in the next seven days is a nice warming trend. These 60s turning in upper 80s in areas like San Jose. We're expected to hit the 90s in some inland areas as well, off into the East Bay. And then we'll average out as we head into next week's forecast. I'm going to have more on that in a bit and why that's happening coming up in your first alert forecast. For now, over to you, G. Jessica, thank you. Let's talk about the roadways. If you're taking South 680 at Main Street, here is a live look for that Walnut Creek commute for folks working their way towards 24. Not too bad. In fact, we're seeing some pretty decent conditions on certain parts of the East Bay commute. Does not include 880, at least not the portion between Hayward and Fremont. If you're taking westbound 80 towards the Bay Bridge, that is certainly starting to slow down just a little bit. And 880 towards the San Mateo Bridge, that is busy. And once you're on the bridge itself, you're going to see some brake lights. What's surprising is how quiet things are out of the South Bay. We'll see if that picks up a little bit as we get a little closer to that 8 o'clock hour. But really, North 101, as you work your way from South San Jose near 28680, that's the only slow spot I'm seeing. All right, G, we have some breaking news out of Gaza this morning. and It involves 100,000 Palestinians in the southern city of Rafah are fleeing. Israel giving them warning, dropping pamphlets, and announcing evacuation orders. This is signaling an impending ground invasion that Israel has been committed to. We can also tell you that ceasefire talks have been put on hold. This is file video. You're seeing some bombing there, but that is not right now in Rafa. After the order, explosions and columns of smoke were seen coming from the city. The fear now for Gazans is that this could lead to unbearable tragedy. Israel said this invasion into Rafa is necessary to take down the last significant Hamas stronghold. President Joe Biden confirmed he will be talking to the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu about the situation. 
Lowry College students around the Bay Area continue to protest on local campuses. They are demanding a ceasefire in the war in Gaza and asking their schools to divest from any company with economic ties to Israel. And we have just learned that Columbia has canceled their commencement ceremony. That was scheduled for May 15th. This is following weeks-long protests there as well. Nationwide, more than 2,000 demonstrators have been arrested in recent weeks. Now, after weeks of on-campus protests at Northeastern University, thousands of graduates and their families gathered at Boston's Fenway Park for the 2024 commencement ceremony. You can see there the one person was detained for disrupting Sunday's ceremony. Well, meanwhile, in Los Angeles, police cleared the Palestine Solidarity Encampment at USC early Sunday morning. The university closed the campus and warned protesters of arrests, but later said the protest has been shut down peacefully without any arrests. And here is a look at the aftermath at USC. The school is now replacing its main commencement ceremony with an event at the L.A. Coliseum later this week. And as of right now, we are not aware of any planned disruptions to local commencements. Berkeley ceremony is next weekend. Sonoma State is the following weekend. And then after that, SF State. All three campuses have active pro-Palestinian encampments. Now, meanwhile, last night, Israel began observing Holocaust Remembrance Day. Netanyahu and other Israeli officials attended a ceremony at the Yad Vashem Holocaust Museum in Jerusalem. Wreaths were laid in front of six lit torches representing the six million Jewish lives killed in the violence. And this morning, life came to a halt across Israel as a two-minute-long siren marked a moment of silence. People froze, drivers stopped to get out of their cars, all in the memory of the Nazi genocide victims. The already somber day had additional meaning against the backdrop of the war in Gaza. Nicole. It's time now for a look at this morning's top story. Cinco de Mayo celebrations in San Jose turning violent after two people were stabbed near the festivities. Both victims were rushed to the hospital last night. One of them, a juvenile who is expected to survive. The other, an adult male still in critical condition. They were stabbed near South King Road in Lido Way. Police say the area was packed with cars and people leaving the Cinco de Mayo celebrations at the time. Meanwhile, in Oakland, a number of sideshows took place on busy intersections. Police responded with helicopters as they were already expecting Cinco de Mayo burnouts. While they couldn't get to every car doing donuts, police did release this picture of one of the people arrested for reckless evading and taking part in a sideshow. This one happened on International Boulevard just before 5.45 p.m. yesterday. The driver's Jeep was also impounded. Oakland is trying to get more international tourists by changing the name of their airport. The Port Commission is set to make their controversial final vote this Thursday. The name in question, the San Francisco Bay Oakland International Airport. In an initial vote last month, Port Commissioners voted unanimously in favor of the name change. Oakland officials hope the modified name will boost worldwide recognition of the airport's location here in the Bay Area. There is pushback, though. The city of San Francisco has filed a lawsuit in federal court to fight the name change. Let's talk some tourism now. This morning, Governor Gavin Newsom announcing some positivity. Yesterday, he stood atop the Golden Gate Bridge saying tourism numbers are up. But he's talking about California as a whole. And when we look at the Bay Area, the picture is not quite as golden. Visit California says tourists spent $2.7 billion less in 2023 than they spent just four years ago. 14 billion from tourists to San Francisco County, which is a slide downward. In fact, counties that usually see the most tourists spending in the Bay Area still have not made those pre-pandemic numbers. Let's talk about Santa Clara County. They're almost back to pre-pandemic levels. Tourists spending about 7 billion there. San Mateo also inching up only 100 million off from those pre-pandemic numbers. So it's evident we have a lot of work to do here in the Bay Area, and we will do it. So oftentimes, stories like these are just the numbers without the faces, but not here. Our Da Lin now has the story of a real-time business owner who says he's struggling. Live jazz, warm weather. 
and happy visitors. This is music to the ears of Pier 39 business owners. We're coming from London. We just landed yesterday. While business activity is buzzing at Pier 39, that's not the case everywhere. Waiting for the tourists to come and for the season to really get going. And, and as you can see on a Sunday afternoon brunch, uh, it's not happening. Mac Liburd of Pier 23 Cafe says they are surviving, not thriving. In fact, he says business was down about 25 to 30% in 2023 compared to 2019. You need people coming through the door to survive and when they're not coming, it's it's hard to keep doors open. He's not alone. Many small businesses complain they're still recovering from the pandemic. You guys can hop on this one here. The owner of San Francisco Deluxe Tours tells me his tour bus business is down about 40% in 2023 compared to 2019. I'm the oldest guy out here at 77. Pedicab operator Corral Nunnick says his business is down at least 20%. We've been having to work harder for less cash, basically. 2019 was good. 2023, you know, the thing that has died is the international tourist. And that's what industry leaders are blaming, specifically the Asian market. Scott Beck, the CEO of San Francisco Travel, says only about 50% of the Chinese tourists have returned. And traditionally, he says, Chinese visitors spend big money in San Francisco. Pre-pandemic, China was our largest long-haul overseas market. Over $2 billion a year of spend in our market. Right now, capped by the governments of the U.S. and governments of China. Air service is capped right now at 50 percent of pre-pandemic levels. So we can't get back to the normal, what we would call normal baseline visitation because you do not have the seats in the airplanes to make it happen. He says L.A. gets a lot more domestic visitors and the domestic visitation has pushed the Southern California tourism industry well beyond the 2019 levels. Experts say SoCal's strong rebound is what's driving up the entire state's tourism spending. Our record breaking tourism numbers last year, $150 million. The governor made the announcement on top of the iconic Golden Golden Gate Bridge. The CEO of Pier 39 says they've been fortunate. Their sales were flat compared to 2019. The convention business is still down and for 24, you know, we expect it to be down and really not rebound um, until 25 and, and beyond. Max says while tourism spending is trending in the right direction, San Francisco still has a lot of work ahead, especially on its image and reputation. We're really hanging our hat on that it's going to be good and tourism is going to come back and people are going to want to go out and spend money. Local experts say the number of Chinese visitors will likely return to the 2019 levels by 2026. Dalin reporting there. So let's talk about work for solutions. San Francisco leaders pushing small business week at Pier 70 later today. All this week, restaurants and mom and pop shops will host events to get people in the doors. Nonprofit food hall La Cocina starts the festivities at 530 today, sweetening the deal with DJs and dance collaborations and food and drinks.